welcome viewers so this is going to be an interesting uh, video series about hepatolithiasis management and uh, this will be a step by step guide from theory to live surgery so it was a case of 62 year old gentleman with the hepatolithiasis choroidocolithiasis status post ercp stenting and we managed this patient with the help of extra hepatic bile duct resection hepatic genostomy and access loop we have designed this series in a way that junior trainees and budding surgeon understand the basic nitty gritties, complete theory, the relevant literature, and uh, the basic steps involved in the management of hepatolithiasis. So the main highlights of this uh, course and complete video series will be, um, first we'll give a real life case scenario, the relevant radiology, the definition, the epidemiology, we will briefly touch upon the etiology, then difference between primary and secondary hepatolithiasis, then treatment option that is a resection versus a drainage, classification of hepatolithiasis uh, according to different classification, DOMS classification and uh, other classification, the theory of excess loop, the relevant literature, the different types of loops, and we also demonstrate live surgery in the form of extra hepatic bile duct resection, ruined by hepatic genostomy and creation of the excess loop. So this is going to be a complete package. Stay tuned till the end and uh, please do subscribe to our channel if you are watching this on YouTube and do get connected with us on our app and our website. The links for the same are available as I said earlier in the description of this video. So as a prequel to this uh, video, it is highly desirable that you watch our previous video on acute cholangitis management. There was a case of forgotten CBD stent in which we have discussed in detail about the management of acute cholangitis types, creating diagnosis, and so that you understand the theoretical discussion in this uh, case scenario better because we are not going to go into the details of acute cholangitis definition and grading as we have already covered and the link for the same is also available in the description and in the i cards of this video this was a case of 62 year old male with no known comorbidity no surgery and he presented to us to our emergency department with history of pain abdomen surgical obstructive jaundice in the form of clay color stool high color urine for five month duration and this was an acute exacerbation with history of fever, chills and rigors and altered status. On examination, patient had a deep ictus with the pulse rate of 134 per minutes and BP of 82 by 60 millimeter of mercury. So there was no history of UGI and lower GI bleed, no history of loss of appetite and loss of weight. And as the discussion evolves, you will understand better why we have spe specifically highlighted this history because these patients can present with end stage liver disease or they can be concomitant uh, cholangiocarcinoma in these patients. So these history become important and uh, uh, it will become better as the discussion evolves with time in this video. So his basic backup was there was a uh, leukocytosis, the TLC count was 16,700 and uh, there was raised bilirubin in the form of conjugated hyperbilirubinemia with transaminitis pattern and raised ALP. Ultrasound abdomen was suggestive of abnormal liver with over distended gallbladder with multiple calculi and there was central and peripheral IHBRD present with cholangiocolithiasis and hepatolithiasis up to secondary confluence. And so uh, understand that liver has to be commented because as I said, patient can present with secondary bilicerosis. Uh, gallbladder is important because this was, uh, this was, I mean, stone was primarily in the CBD, the so GV were distended. Otherwise, it should have been contacted as per the Corvosius law. And uh, there was extensive stone burden. Patient was managed conservatively with the help of IV fluids, antibiotics and other supporting measures and patient improved and as this was a severe cholangitis grade 3 as per the Tokyo guidelines and as I said earlier it has been covered in detail so please do watch our video on acute cholangitis management so patient was planned for urgent bleeding compression because this was a severe 
कोलिजाइटिस टोक्यो ग्रेड टोक्यो ग्रेड थ्री सो एज पर दी टोक्यो गाइडलाइंस 2018 ग्रेड थ्री सीवियर कोलिजाइटिस रिक्वायर्स अर्जेंट बिलिटी कंप्रेशन ऑर्गन स्पोर्ट्स एंड एंटीबायोटिक सो विद दी हेल्प ऑफ आवर गैस्ट्रोटोलॉजी क्लीग्स अर्जेंट ई आर सी पी वॉज डन अ टेन सेंटीमीटर सेवन फ्रेंच सी बी डिस्टेंट वॉज प्लेस्ड दे हैव डॉक्यूमेंटेड एक्सटेंसिव कॉलिडोकोलथियासिस एंड आफ्टर द डिकम्प्रेशन पेशेंट हैड ए मार्क इम्प्रूवमेंट एंड पेशेंट वॉज प्लान फॉर द डेफिनेटिव मैनेजमेंट The MRI MRCP images were suggestive of cholangitic residual cholangitic abscess in segment six and segment seven, with overdistant GB and multiple signal voids. The cystic duct was also dilated, measuring up to 13 mm, and the left hepatic duct, right posterior sectoral duct, and right hepatic duct all were dilated, measuring 16.27 mm and 10 mm respectively. With there was a cut off at the confluence. CBD was also hugely dilated with 20 mm diameter and multiple stones were present. Uh, there were multiple single void of measuring up to 4 to 5 mm up to first level branches, and uh, the stent could not be commented upon MRI because of the extensive stone load. So in the first image, uh, you can appreciate there are multiple signal voids in the. Uh, first order bile radicals that is uh, the right hepatic duct right anterior right posterior sectoral duct that you can appreciate and in the middle image we have tried to demonstrate the anatomy it is type 3 b biliary anatomy that you will understand shortly so uh, the horizontal duct is always right posterior sectoral duct rpst and the left duct is Uh, again horizontal so these are two duct and the uh, the vertical duct is always right anterior sectoral duct these were all dilated and jam packed with stones uh, up to the uh, first level biliary uh, radicals and uh, you can understand there is extensive stone world we plan to cover this biliary anatomy Uh, clinical and radiological correlation in some other video tutorial so stay tuned and uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for all the future updates this is the magnified view and the stone burden is better appreciated in this view and uh, friends uh, it is important to realize the anatomy uh, as uh, in this mri it was reported that there was a abrupt cut off in the uh, at the level of confluence but if we review the imaging carefully there is no abrupt cut off and the whole cbd whole extra hepatic wild duct intra hepatic wild duct system is dilated and likely we are dealing with the structure structure at the lower end of the cbd so it is always essential especially for a surgeon especially who are dealing with hpv surgery to analyze this radiological anatomy to have good clinical correlation because uh, otherwise the management option will change so in this figure you can imagine the what is the type 3b anatomy when the right and the the sectoral duct that's rast join the left hepatic duct to form the uh, common hepatic duct and the right posterior sectoral duct uh, that is rp in the pictorial depiction and rpst in the mri pics join this common hepatic duct so this is the type 3b anatomy friends and uh, as i said we will cover a detail talk on this biliary anatomy different types of type 1 type 2 biliary anatomy in some other video tutorial for the time being just remember this configuration that this is type 3b this sort of tri confluence and this is type 3b biliary anatomy and the clinical implication of this anatomy will be that you have to clear this right posterior sectoral duct separately otherwise the stone burden will be left behind and the same we have demonstrated in the live surgery Uh, these are the axial images cross sectional images and the stone burden cbd and in the gallbladder is appreciated this uh, round structure with the blackish void is the cbd and the globular structure as you can understand is the uh, gallbladder and uh, both are laden with stone burden also remember this configuration as a part of 
primary and secondary hepatolithiasis that you will understand uh, as we discuss about the different types of hepatolithiasis as there is a burden of stone and likely causes uh, in the lower part of CBD like it can be the stricture or it can be some uh, uh, sphincter or eye dysfunction that led to the hepatolithiasis and the coldopolithiasis. Another important point from this MRI MRCP images that we have to remember is that is a bile over uniform involvement and there is an extensive stone in the intrahepatic extrahepatic bile duct system and there is no atrophy and hypertrophy complex because all these information all these findings has a bearing on the management whether we are going to deal with the resection procedure or we are going to deal with the drainage procedure. So the diagnosis after this MRI in this patient was hepatolithiasis, colidocolithiasis, status post ARCP stenting and likely cause we were suspecting lower end CBD stricture and uh, patient had uh, recurrent acute cholangitis in the follow-up. So he had recurrent stent blockage and he required stent exchange thrice at interval of four to eight weeks. Patient was started on also deoxycholic acid and utilib is the most common drug we use here. Antibiotics were given some time for a long time. But as we understand that this patient has a lithogenic bile. So these patients have a tendency to make stone and uh, the lithogenic bile, the thick basid bile lead to repeated blockage of the stunts. So we were not getting at adequate time that usually we require uh, four to six weeks uh, interval, a quiescent period between two uh, episodes of acute cholangitis. So uh, he required a stent exchange, CBD exchange rate thrice uh, in a short period of uh, three, four months. And uh, we were planning for a definitive management after a quiescent stage when the patient has a no infection and we have a better uh, I mean, uh, physiology available for the uh, anastomosis. So coming to the definition of a hepatolithiasis. So uh, definition of hepatolysis is simple state forward. That is the presence of gallstones proximal to the biliary conference. So uh, if there are stone present in the right hepatic duct or the left hepatic duct that is proximal to this common hepatic duct, then it will be a case of hepatolithiasis. So this disease is endemic mainly in the uh, this uh, Asia Pacific region, Southeast Asian region, East Asian region patients like China, Japan, Mongolia, North Korea, South Korea and Taiwan. India, we have some cases and uh, there is no gender bias that it affects male and female equally. The percent, the incidence in Asia Pacific region is ranging from 5 to 25 percent in different case series and it is rarely reported in best and the incidence is 0.6 to 1.3 percent. The most common age factor is 5th to 6th decade and the prevalence is highest in the China. As far as the biliary, the stone composition is concerned, the intrahepatic uh, calcium bilirubinate stones are there and compared with the uh, calcium bilirubinate stone, the GV and CBD, they have relatively high cholesterol content, so they are relatively softer in constant. We will cover this part in uh, next video that will be second video on this series because otherwise the video length will become uh, unusually long and uh, you may get bored. So the briefly we will cover the sexual procedure, the non-sexual procedure and how to uh, do the surveillance, what is the treatment of a recurrent stone. So that we will cover in the second part and uh, we will also cover the different classification for the hepatolithiasis, what are the endoscopic approaches and what are the intermediate radiology approaches and what are the surgical approaches possible. So stay tuned and uh, the whole course will be available or is available depending on the time horizon you are watching this video on our app or in the uh, members only section on YouTube. So uh, uh, please uh, get connected with us on those platforms also. And uh, thank you very, very much for uh, watching few viewers. We hope we were able to add some new insight to your knowledge and uh, stay tuned. Thank you very much.